If you've followed along with the series so far, you should have a pretty good understanding of how logic gates work. However, there's still... Wait a second, what happened to me? Um, anyways. Well, there's still a large area we haven't even covered yet. And that is how to go from a single logic gate to a full contraption. And even though that seems like a really big step, it's pretty much just the same thing, but you have more of it. Alright, so let's try to build something more advanced. Soltar sent me a really cool build they made over at Discord and let me use it. Normally you'd have an idea in your head and you have to figure out how to actually build it in block form. But let's use their build to visualize what an idea might look like. So the first thing we can notice is we have three switches and three pipes. We press the switches to make the pipes rotate and we have to make them go in a loop for the water to get pulled to the other side. Instead of trying to figure out everything at the same time, let's just start with what we know. We know we're going to need three pipes that will be able to change direction. I'm just going to place three of these pluses and then add actuators on all four sides. And then we'll be able to toggle these actuators to make the pipes look like they rotate. Here I'm just using an actuator rod and putting them in the formation they should be when the game is complete. And then we can simply just wire up the switches to the pipes. For the middle one we can just connect it in an X. For the left one we can do the same, but I'm going to be using a different color. If we now try to activate the switches, we notice the pipe rotating the way we want. However, we still have the right one to deal with and we can't really connect it in the same way. If we want it to work, we need to use two separate colors. One horizontal, one vertical. And then we need two separate switches for it too. One for the blue wire, one for the red wire. And now if you see we alternate between clicking them, the pipe is going to rotate in the way we want. If you want some way to detect when all switches are in the correct states, we can simply just use an AND gate, because we want to know if the first switch is turned on, if the second switch is turned on, and if the third switch is in the correct state. So let's just connect the first two, and then we can see this works. When I flip the switches, the lamp corresponds to the pipe's angle. So only if it's facing the right angle, the lamp is going to be turned on. So how are we going to do the third pipe? Well, if we just tried to connect the red and blue wire both up to a switch, it's not going to work. It's only going to toggle, not rotate. Instead, we're going to need something else. We know the pipe can face in four different angles. And this means we need something that scrolls through four different positions, one for each angle. The keyword here is scrolling because we need something called a scroller. It's also known as a shift register, because every time you press a switch, the lamp that's turned on is going to shift to either the left or to the right, or maybe even both. So how are we going to do it in this scenario? Well, we only ever need it to shift to the right. So let's start by placing down four logic gates, and then we can place lamps turned off on all of them, except for one, and this is the lamp that's going to change to the right. We can now place fault lamps on top, and then we just want to wire them up in order. So the first one is connected to the second one, the second one is connected to the third one, the third one is connected to the fourth one, and that should be good enough for now. Now let's hook up the main switch to all of the faulty lamps, and then let's see what happens when we press it. Well, s something is clearly wrong here, and there are two major mistakes. Let's try to understand what it's currently doing. So instead of the first lamp moving over one slot to the right, now both of them are turned on. So why is this? Well, it says that the first lamp is turned on, and that means it's going to power the second lamp. However, it never turned the first lamp off. If we click once more, something weird happens. So why did the second lamp move over? Well, that's because both the first and the second lamp, which were turned on earlier, are going to power the one next to it. When the second lamp gets powered, that means the third lamp gets turned on. When the first lamp gets powered, that means the second lamp should turn off. What we want to happen is for the first lamp to turn on the second lamp, and then the first lamp should turn off. And this will make it look like it moved one step over. So what does all of this mean? Well basically instead of the wire to only trigger the next one in line, we want it to also trigger itself. And to do this, we just place down a single wire of the same color on the logic lamp that's above the logic gate that gets triggered. It seems to work. However, if we keep pressing the switch, nothing is going to happen. Instead, we want it to loop back around. To do this, we can just connect the last logic gate to the first logic gate, just like how we connected to the other logic gates. 
and now we see it also loops. So here we have our finished shift register. Let's try to wire up the logic gate to the pipe. To connect the first red one, let's just connect it to the horizontal line. And now if we press the switch once, we should see it rotating once. And that seems to work, so let's connect the blue one. We can just connect it to the other line. And yeah, that works too. And for the third one, we need to use a new color. However, we already used all four colors. So I'm just gonna try picking green, dragging it up through the other green wire and then onto the plus. And now we have this intersection point. How are we going to fix that? Because we don't want them to connect together. Well, then we have something called a junction box. They basically make two wires of the same color not be connected to each other. You see how this junction box is plus shaped? That means the wire that goes horizontal and the wire that goes vertical are going to be separate. Let's just test it and yeah, it seems to be working. So let's just connect the yellow wire and to do that we simply just connect them together. And this should be the entire design done. It works for all four angles. Now in order to connect this to the winning states, we know it's only when the first logic lamp is turned on that we want the winning lamp to be turned on. So we see how the yellow and the red wire are both connected to this lamp. That means we can just connect them to the AND gate lamp as well and they should react in the same way. Now if we try to press the switch, we notice this lamp is only turned on when the pipe is facing in the correct direction. Which is exactly what we want. We basically have a finished system now. Only when all of these three pipes are in the right direction, this AND gate is going to be turned on. Now finally I'm just going to place an inlet and an outlet pump. And then I want them to start pumping water when the AND gate is on. So I can just place down a timer and then connect the timer to the two pumps. It all seems to be working, but there's still a major thing we can do. At the moment, all the wiring did is a mess, and we need to clean this up. So how are we going to make it all look nicer, use less wires, make it more compact? Well, we can start with the shift register. If we try to put them diagonal instead of horizontal, we can fit a lot more logic gates in less space. And putting them diagonal means I can connect them like this, and they're still all connected to the next one. We should also connect the logic gates to their own lamps, just like we did before. Now I'm going to use a second color to connect the AND gate to the pipe piece. And this means I can use the same color for both of these that are supposed to actuate the same blocks. And then I can use the second color to connect the other two together with the pipe. We can now use either the green or the yellow wire to connect the faulty lamp to the switch. And this should be the entire pipe done. And to connect this to the output, we don't actually need to use the red and blue wire. Instead, we can use the green and yellow wire. This does require two logic lamps. However, I think it's a lot neater, but it's up to you how you want to do it. For the other two pipes, I don't think there's much optimizing. It's just one switch and one pipe connected with a single wire. It works! Great! That's amazing! So, now you know both how to build a game and how to make it more compact. But that'll have to be it for this episode. I hope you guys learned something, and yeah, I guess that's it. See you in the next one. Bye bye!